Welcome to the RoboFlow Getting Started tutorial. First and foremost, we'll need to create a RoboFlow account. You can enter an email with your first and last name and choose a password or sign up with your GitHub account or sign up with Google. Next, you'll want to be sure that you read the terms of service and the privacy policy. They're available on RoboFlow's website in case you wanted to save them for later. You can now click Save and your account is created. So, as your workspace loads, you can select what you'd like to use the workspace for and the name of the workspace. You can also invite teammates. You can select a role for the teammates, depending on your workspace type. Or you can choose not to invite teammates and skip this step. If you'd like to work in a community workspace or a business workspace, you want to be sure you select the right one, depending on your use case. Roboflow.com slash pricing has more on the features for every workspace. If you're needing a private environment for proof of concept, I recommend you do create a business workspace for your business project. You have the option to go through the guided tutorial with the hard hat sample, or you can just start with your own images. But first, let's take a quick look at some of our resources, like the knowledge base. You can always come here for more information on workspaces, projects, and versions, for example, or if you're looking to figure out how to do things like exporting a data set or modifying classes. So here, we'll start out with the sample project for chess pieces. So you click Create, upload the data, choose an annotation group, which is essentially trying to say what you're trying to find. So for our case, it was chess pieces, so we did pieces. We're sure to unzip the folder, then we can drag it in or do select the folder. If there are any issues with annotations, the UI will let you know. You can also choose to name the batch or leave the default date time. You can choose a split for your data set, or you can add all the images to a specific split. Just be sure to click finish uploading before you start annotating or before you leave this page. As the images are not saved server-side until you click Finish Uploading. You can assign all the images available for labeling, or you can slide the bar to select a different amount. You can also invite new teammates to give them the image assignment. You can add instructions for your labelers so that they understand what exactly it is you're trying to accomplish and so they have a consistent basis for their labels. Again, you can use our knowledge base at help.roboflow.com to add in links for certain resources they might want to use, like the labeling guide for object detection. So here's a look at the labeling interface. Let's label one chess piece here to show you how it works. More of the selection options are available such as the drag tool, the bounding box tool, polygon tool, marking images null, our label assist tool so you can label images faster, repeat previous to repeat the annotation to the previous image, and undo and redo. You'll also see that you can change the class label, or if you've accidentally added a bounding box, you can press backspace or delete twice while you have it selected, and it'll be deleted. You can look at more attributes about the image, such as the metadata or more raw image data. All right, so now that our images are annotated, we can either choose to rename the job, for example, reassign the labeler, or add the images to the data set, or change the split that it occurs in before adding the images to the data set. 
And here's a look at the annotation queue. So our next step is to generate a version. This way, we can actually train a model. You do not have to begin from step one. As you'll normally begin from step three, we can look at the earlier steps to do things like updating class balances, or rather image balances within our train test and validation sets. We can also add pre-processing features, which are applied to all images within your project, the train, valid, and test splits. So we can do things like modifying classes, which is like renaming classes or omitting classes or merging classes together. We can grayscale images. We can resize images as well. And as you'll notice, the pre-processing features also have little notes and tips such as blog posts so you can find more information on why you may want to use that step or how you can leverage it for your project. Auto-orient is something that strips XF data. This is always a good thing to add just in case you have images coming from different device types. So if someone is rotating their camera while they're taking pictures, that might affect performance. So next, we're looking at augmentations. Augmentations are only applied to your training set. So when you look at these, you have the option to mirror each of these augmentations, as you'll see with brightness and exposure. You also see that we have things such as bounding box level augmentations, which will only apply to what is inside the bounding box itself. So again, like the pre-processing steps, the augmentation steps do have blog posts related to them, so you understand how they work. You can click continue here after adding all of the features you'd like. And then you can generate images up to how your account is currently set up for generation. You might have 3x if you're on a public plan, but if you're on a business plan, you can opt for a higher amount. But if you're on a paid business plan, like a growth or enterprise plan, we're happy to add more for you. So next, we're looking at version generation, and we added the version name, and you can always look at the steps that were added when you created the version. One more thing I always like to do is look back at the current steps that I have and make sure that I create a raw image version just in case I'd like to export the images how they are now and without any augmentations. To do this, all you do is apply auto-orient and remove all other pre-processing and augmentation steps. So as you'll see, you can rename a version or delete a version at any time. So as you'll see here, to delete a version. And next, we're now looking at dataset health check to get more metrics on our dataset. Our median image ratio, our class balances, our annotation heat map, and our histogram object count of image, like how many images have a certain object appearing one time, two times, three times, four times, etc. Or our annotation heat map, which shows the locations that most of the annotations appear. The more yellow the heat map is, the more annotations appear in that area. So you can list images by the thumbnail or also by the image title. And you can also use Dataset Health Check to look at your images by class. You can also see whether your images are underrepresented or overrepresented, as those can cause issues with your model overfitting for a certain class and not being prepared to look at other classes when you're running inference. When I say look at other classes, what I mean is that you want to make sure you have equal or at least a good number of representations of every object within the data set to begin, or at least in the early stages, so you can learn what objects your model does best on and which objects your model might need some more work on. So right now we're looking at RoboFlow Universe at universe.roboflow.com, as this is a place where you can find more data sets by subject, by metadata, by industry to add to your project to make it more robust. So now we're looking back at our image upload. So I found some more images to add. So now we're over here and we're going to export our images. You can export in many different formats. 
roboflow.com slash formats have this has the complete list. And additionally, we do have a model library if you'd like to export images and annotation files to train in a Google Colab notebook. This will allow you to train any custom model you'd like and save your model weights. You can use our Python package with your export code or the curl command code or the raw data set link to download your data set and add it to a Colab notebook or add it within your training script so that the images are automatically downloaded in the correct format while you run your training. Just be sure not to share your snippet or your API key beyond your team as your API key is private. If you reveal your API key to others, it gives them the ability to do things such as using the upload API or inference API directly to your project and workspace. You always have the option to revoke your private API key to receive a new one. For every notebook, you want to make sure you create a copy, set any files you add to it, and the history of the runtime is also saved for you. You want to make sure your hardware accelerator is set to GPU so that you can leverage the GPU in Colab. Depending on the tier of Colab you have, you will have access to a different level of GPU. So here we're taking a look at the place where we would add our export code. But don't worry, I did revoke this API key. So you won't be able to access my workspace, unfortunately. So here we are, see that the data set is extracted to the yellow v5 folder. We click refresh here and you see chest sample one. And there's our example image. Here are labels as well. See the train, valid, and test folders are all split out for you in the exact format that the model architecture is expecting for training. You also have readme files, so you know a little bit more about how the data set was prepared. And a data.yaml file, which for YOLO v5 is also the label map. So this next cell we're running, we're just looking at the contents of the data.yaml file and also the locations of the train and the validation folders. So as you'll also see, if you have training credits available, when you create a new workspace, you'll have tra training credits available, or you can request more. These training credits are available for you to use to train a model with RoboFlow Train, our AutoML option. For those of you that are looking to save time or to leverage label assist on a custom data set or to leverage our hosted API or other easy deployment options, if you're just new to computer vision even and want to test out a project, many options for you with RoboFlow Train. You can start training from a checkpoint or from scratch. You can also choose the fast model or the accurate model if you're on a growth or enterprise plan. As you see, the email did say that you get your results in 24 hours, but it's usually much faster. You'll get a details and visualize tab with your model training results to give you a little more information on how things worked. So the training graphs, the x-axis has the number of epics that it ran or the number of iterations that you went through for the entire model. And now we're looking at the visualize tab. So we're seeing the ground truth first, the model predictions. And as you'll see, we saw a lot of black and white pawns. Hmm, why might that be? Well, you can use dataset health check, just regenerate it here, and you'll see that black and white pawns were heavily overrepresented in our data set. So we should look to add more examples of other chess pieces so that our model isn't overfitted on only black and white pawns and has a better chance at knowing the other pieces on the chessboard. And I know this can be difficult as black pawns and white pawns are the most common pieces on the board. Another thing you'll see is after your model is trained with RoboFlow Train, you have the ability to test it. With the RF widget, for example, you can drop an image file on there and see whether you get detections or not. And oddly enough, we 
weren't able to recognize that white pawn. Let's try another image here, see the results we get. You'll see your prediction results in JSON here on the right. You can always copy your results. Additionally, you have other deployment options, such as the curl command for inference, code samples in many different languages, and deploying to edge devices like Jetsons or Oaks, or using our hosted API for working with servers or other device types. So as you'll see in here again, testing the inference, Now, let's take a quick look at our workspace settings. As we may want to cancel an invite to someone, add RoboFlow support for assistance. We may want to add more labelers to help us get more representations of chess pieces in the data set. And another thing we can do is add more people to the data set to take a look at our model training results and give us some feedback. Or if you're on a public workspace, share your RoboFlow universe link. And then others can look at your workspace without having the ability to manipulate any of your images. It's another look at workspace settings such as your API key. You can copy it from here, or you can revoke your API key to get a new one, as I had done earlier, since you had seen my API key in that YOLO v5 model training file. Next, for third-party keys, if you're on a growth or enterprise plan, you do have the ability to access exports for AWS and Azure directly to your account. Now we're looking at the upload API documentation. As we did add images to our data set, but when we were testing it out, we saw, wow, we had some issues noticing a few pieces or inferring on, a f on some of the pieces. We saw way too many black and white pawns, and in some cases, we didn't see a piece when we should have. So we can do some smart sampling with our APIs, and this will help us to add more images to improve our data set. We call this active learning. Taking examples of failures in our tests, whether that's frames from video or raw images, and bringing those into our data set. Next, we're going to complete this tutorial by looking through the Hardhat project and taking a quick tour of data set health check. This is going to be a very powerful tool that will help you to improve your data set. As you can see at the top here, the number of annotations, missing examples, null examples, etc. We do have the class balance as well, so you can see the classes we have present. You can click on the class name to filter to images by the classes. You can also look at the dimension insights of your images to help you with figuring out how you may want to resize your images. Here's your aspect ratio distribution. We also have our annotation heat map. So we know where our images are appearing. Say the closer we get to yellow, the more images are within that portion of an image. The closer we are to blue, the fewer, image, the fewer representations are there. One more note on the heat map is that if an area of the heat map is white, that means that there are no annotations in any of your images that are in that portion of the screen. So here we filter down to images that have the person class within them. We see that nothing within the testing set has a person class. We do see that we have some representations within the training set and the validation set with the person class, however. This can also be a big help with setting up your data set as you're bringing in new image examples, as we'd like to have at least one example of the person class in our testing set if we're training our model to also know what people look like. That way, when we leverage the visualize tool, we can look at the ground truth versus the model predictions. So in this sample project, you can always come back to do the data set health check tour, or you can always start a new project. And that concludes our RoboFlow getting started tutorial. Thank you for watching.